Hi, this is Ghost and welcome back. I'm going to start out today with a massive apology. I am so sorry I haven't uploaded in well over a week. I have had a stinking cold, which I have to say I'm still feeling the effects of and I still feel pretty rough. But I am now able to talk and my voice was completely gone the other week and I could not could not do a commentary. I couldn't even form a sentence without sort of losing my voice halfway through it. So I do apologize for that. I'm probably going to have to go, and re re go ahead and pre-record some videos. So if this vid if this situation does happen again, that I do uh, have something to upload in the meantime. But today's video, I am going to cover over, cover over, cover the information that we received from DICE regarding the new DLC that is coming up in the March patch. Now, uh, there's a lot of information that came out with it. I wanted to cover at the time, but obviously I wasn't able to do it when I wanted to, so I'm going to cover it now briefly before I get onto the new information, which was the new weapons that we're getting. So do bear with me shortly for that. Uh, I do also want to say, I do apologise for any of the uh, butchering of the French language. French was never something I was particularly strong at at school, and uh, subsequently my pronunciation of the language is a little lacking. So starting out, I wanted to cover a couple of the maps. Firstly, the fort map. Um, I'm really worried that it's going to turn into a, just a massive operations locker again. And now that's not necessarily a bad thing because that was a massively popular map. And getting something that's really infantry focused is going to be a good thing. Especially considering this map pack is very focused around the tanks. Primarily with some of the weapons, that uh, the vehicles that we're getting in this map pack that's coming out. It's going to be very focused on that. So to get a very infantry focused map is going to be a good thing. The thing that I'm worried about is because it was a very nade spammy map in previous games. And this game is so focused around grenades already that it's going to be very difficult to do anything unless you are just throwing grenades constantly. And admittedly that might make support a bit more popular as we will just be throwing grenades constantly if the map does play out anything like uh, Operation Locker did on Battlefield 3 and 4. Um, next up is the Soussons map, which is, um, I'm really curious, I'm uh, really hopeful, in fact, should I say, that this map doesn't turn into another Giant Shadow. Giant Shadow could have been a great map, and unfortunately it's not, because it's very, very open. Now, the reason that it's, it's too open, I'm hoping Soussons is going to be something a bit more like St. Quentin Scar, where the whole focus of the central part of the map is around this village in the middle. And that means that if you're not in a tank, you actually have somewhere to fight around. Because I, th I kind of feel very much with Giant Shadow. It had these awesome areas, the beginning and the end of the map, um, where you had these awesome little villages and they were great fun to fight in when you were actually there. But you spent so little time in each of them. The whole focus of the map was around the Zeppelin in the middle, which wasn't great. Unless you were using a long-range weapon, you were just kind of screwed. And you couldn't really do that because the tanks were so dominant on the game you needed to play assault and to be able to do that and sit at these long ranges was very difficult so i'm hoping there is a real central focus around this middle section of the map obviously we're getting two new operations which is a good thing love operations getting more of them is only a good thing also we are getting a new game mode which i'm really looking forward to a combination of assault and rush and assault and rush <laughs> a combination of rush and conquest is a great combination there are two epic game modes in this game and to have them combined together and to see rush actually played a bit more i go every now and again i try and play rush but i think it's probably because the servers are so small you only get the 24 man servers people just don't play on it and if you've got team people on the other team everyone just leaves and it's just it's a bit of a shame because it is a great game mode it was so much fun in bad company too and i'd love to see that make a bit more of a resurgence in this game hopefully this new game mode will do something like that it's very reminiscent of war from world at war so hopefully we'll get to see something like that now saying obviously i said it was we're getting a very tank focused uh, map pack and primarily focused around that is the char 2c tank now this thing is a beast it looks monstrous um only thing I've got to say about it is I kind of worry a little bit because it's going to be so much smaller we can't target it from all the way across the map like we can with the Zeppelin or the battleship or the train. It's going to be something that you can probably hide a little bit or play very tactically with and not just sort of and have it so you just hold a point. So if you get it on something like an operations map you can just sit there and hold a specific area and not have to worry about the rest of your and not, not sort of think about anything else and you've got to control that area specifically really hard, heavily now obviously they have thought about this and maybe they have thought about very heavily into doing this that the char 2c could do that so they've put in also an emplaced artillery now if the emplaced artillery is literally just designed to be able to take out the char 2c if it sits to get in one place too long i think that's a great idea however i don't think it's primarily going to be used for that it's going to be used for killing infantry which i'm not a massive fan of a bit worried that it's going to be a bit too strong we'll have to see how that actually plays out on top of the Char 2C, we are also seeing a new heavy tank, the Saint Charmant, which is also another French tank. It is a super heavy tank and it looks beast. You have to say, that thing looks badass. And the front of that, because it's got such a pointy front, it's going to be an absolute beast in tank battles because you're going to get a lot of ricochets off it. Looking forward to seeing how that plays out. Maybe we'll see a little bit less of the heavy tank used all the time. 
However, another negative that I can see in this game is the new Elite class. I'm really not looking forward to another set of nade spams. Hopefully he's only got like one lethal grenade and the rest of them are sort of abilities to help him move around the map because he's obviously only got a melee weapon. Going to be interesting to see how that guy plays out. Have to point out, this little clip coming up, I did... I did put it in slow motion uh, after this. This guy blew as I shot him and he <laughs> hit my mate right in the head. The, re the flinch from his character was hilarious. It made me piss myself for a good 5-10 minutes. Um, moving on to the next point, which is the main focus of the new information that we got, which is the new weapons. Now, starting out, we... I have to say, I did say there were 19 weapons. Now, I say there's 19 weapons because there are going to be 19 weapons to play with because of the weapon variants. There are only six new weapons being added into the game, or individual weapons being added into the game specifically. Starting out with the um, MLE 1903 Extended, which I'm assuming has got to be going to be put in the tanker or the pilot class. The other two pistols that we have with extended mags are the Framerstock Auto and the 1911, both of which sit in that class. Now, they are epic little weapons, but because they sit in that class, you're not using them for that specific use purpose. You're, you're using them, you're using those classes for the tank or the plane. Um, so I don't think we'll see that weapon very much in the battlefield. I might be wrong, and it might be a new weapon that's being added in, but I can't see where else it would really fit in. Oh, oh, we are, also, we are getting three knives, but I'm I'm really hoping dice aren't saying there. Some of the three weapons that you'll get, Cap, the 20 that we're adding in the DLC, I really hope that's not something that's transpiring. Um, but I could be wrong, uh, which does make me a little bit apprehensive of the fact that we've only they said they were only getting 20 weapons added in in the next, in the, over the DLCs. And whether they're adding nine technically in already, does that mean we're only going to get 11 more? Kind of worried on that respect. Hopefully, the the, the, the MLE and the club, the weapons are and the melee weapons aren't added in on that. Looking forward to some of these melee weapons. The cogwheel club just sounds badass. As does the nail knife sounds a little bit interesting. Going to be interested to see what that actually uh, results in. But moving on to the actual weapons, starting out with the Ribeles 1918, which I'm guessing by the looking at looking up this weapon is going to be the SMG. And I think this weapon's going to be uh, going to sit somewhere between the Pell Regal and the MP18. It has about a 600 RPM, but it only has a 25 round magazine, which I know we have the uh, automatic, which only has a 25 round magazine, but it has that ridiculous rate of fire which this weapon doesn't have. It's going to be interesting to see how it plays out, whether we're going to see a new weapon variant. I would love to see something like, um, you remember from Black Ops 1, we had the dual mag, so you had a really fast reload. It'd be quite cool to see something like that come in, so we have a really fast reload out of this weapon, and it gives us a new weapon variant as well. So, who knows? I think that'd be quite fun. Next up is the, I'm glad they call it the RSC 1917, because it has a long, much, much longer name, which I'm sure I'd make a mistake on pronouncing that. Um, and then this I'm kind of apprehensive, very apprehensive about this one because it. I have a feeling it's going to be another Slep Ladder 1906 because by standard it only has a five round box mag. Hopefully because it's got a box mag they might be able to give us an extended version of it so it might be more effective and I'm obviously with the variants they might just give us a factory, a marksman or a sniper variant of it and then an extended version of it. Hopefully making it a lot more usable than 1906 and not having something completely unusable like the 1906. I was thinking I've oh, like 200 hours plus played in this game and I've been killed by the 1906 probably about five Five, six times at, at most that's not something you want from a game i mean i've got i think i've probably got about 60 kills on the weapon and that's purely because it was level 10 i unlocked it i was like i've got to see what this is like oh my god this is awful why am i using this i'll go back to using any of the other medic weapons so hopefully they do something to make it a little bit i mean hopefully the weapons variants make it a little bit special or they take some artistic liberties with it and it doesn't start out with that five round box mag Next up, which is a really interesting weapon, this one, it's the Lebel Model 1886, which I'm, it's got to be the sniper rifle that's coming out for the French Army. It's a bolt-action rifle, but it has an 8-round tube magazine, and it also has a really interesting cartridge. The cartridge is an 8mm round, but it's got a smokeless, am it's a smokeless cartridge, so you can't see it at long range, or can't see it being fired. It was meant to be invisible, being fired at long range. So does this mean that the sweep spot on this gun is going to be even longer than the Springfield? Kind of hoping it isn't, because we've already got too many snipers sat at the back of the map doing sod all, giving them a weapon that would get, amplify this could only be detrimental to the game. So I hope that they don't add that in. But it's going to be interesting to see where they add this in. I mean, whether they add it, because it... I mean, the other thing I was meant to say about this medic weapon, I'd love to see, a, like, a burst-round medic weapon. I loved burst-round weapons, especially... I mean, my, my prime favourite was the AN-94 from Bad Company 2. I'd love to see something like that return in and maybe have an experimental version of that, uh, that medic weapon. It'd be quite a fun addition to the game. Who knows? We'll see. Now, a weapon I really do hope they take artistic liberties with is the Chow Chat. I hope I said that mildly correctly. Don't know whether I did. It's a Chow Chat LMG. Now, this is... Uh, well, it, it, its stats aren't good. Um, it's, its base uh, rate of fire was 240 rounds per minute, 
which is weak. Um, on top of that, it only has a 20 round magazine. So unless they really sort of beef up its stats massively, it's gonna be it's it's gonna be bad. It's got it would have a slower rate of fire than all of the uh, all of the medic weapons in the game. I don't see how that would be usable unless it has like an insane damage model and like uh, like uh, what was it? There's an M60 from a, uh, one of the Call of Duties which was like a two hit at close range and it fell out to three shots. If it was something like that, maybe it would work. But I can't see how that would be something that they'd implement into the game. In really curious to see how that's going to be added in, and I'm guessing they're going to have to take some artistic liberties with that. And last up, and last but not least, is the Sorgen Inertia, which, if you hadn't guessed, isn't actually a French weapon. It's actually a Sweden, Swedish weapon, which was primarily used by the Norwegians in the First World War, so I'm not quite sure why it's coming out in the French DLC. And it's pretty much a carbon copy of the 12G Automatic, which is getting a buff in this next patch, so hopefully that'll be quite interesting to see how that works out. I'm assuming it's going to be pretty much the same as that, just be a slightly different look to it. Um, interest, it'll be very interesting to see how they work out. The weapons I'm really interested to see is what they do with the sniper rifle and the medic weapon and obviously the LMG. Also one thing I will say about the uh, sniper weapon, it's one of the most popular, it was such a popular weapon at the time. Between 1887 and 1916, nearly three and a half million of these rifles were made by the French state and used across their military. So it was a big popular weapon and obviously it was quite effective. So I'm really interested to see what dice do with that. Right guys, the uh, video has come to an end. The gameplay itself was a 58-0 with the flanker light tank French light tank. I uh, thought it was fitting for this little commentary uh, in this video. I hope you enjoyed this. It's quite difficult to use the light tank because it can be killed very quickly. Anyway guys, thank you very much for watching and I shall see you next time. Goodbye for now.